this is the bias. So I'd like to see if we can turbocharge the inspiration that's coming to the nation because the inspiration that's coming to the nation is the inspiration that they have to accept the infiltration of the new point of view that we are going to have to do some radical rearrangement of our living arrangements if we're going to be able to find the proper tools to get through the coming ages because it's going to be a long haul, people. It's going to be a long haul before it all starts to make sense again. But by saying it makes, by me saying that it's until it makes sense again, what I mean is that it's going to be a long haul before the people who have not been able to make their senses tune into the current channel will have to go through a lot of trouble and turmoil before they can attune their senses to the realization that they did it to themselves, you see. They did it to themselves. Whatever's going on, they did it to themselves. And now they just have to own up to it and not run away from what others say. Just because they don't like it, you see. So, if people don't like the fact that the access to A lot of information about climate change might make them a little anxious. Then they probably won't want to have access to it because they're already so anxious about their ability to handle their current lives that it will just make them fall apart, you see. Because the only people who can handle reality are the ones who live in reality. And the ones who live in fantasy land can't handle the fact that change is coming to the earth. Because that's a reality. And if you live in a fantasy world where you're afraid of not being afraid of climate change, and then you just have to go on in your fantasy world because fear is the exchange of the people who live in illusion, you see. Their ability to make themselves afraid and to cause others to fear them and fear what they say is their ability to remain locked into a fantasy world and so they live in a fantasy world and they say well you can't do that today you can't be that today you can't say that today because in their fantasy world it's not allowed you see and so they you know it's got to be a lot more and so they stay in a trust on being so sad because they're so mad because they can't stop reality they can't stop the world from going around they can't make it flat you see they can't <clears throat> force everybody else to live in their fantasy world because there's so many people already who are trusting on reality they're just trusting on reality and they don't say hey we got to run away and not pay attention to 
what our senses tell us, you see. And so the ones who have common sense, you see, are not the ones who live in a fantasy. They don't have any common sense because your common sense are very simple, you see. They are your ability to hear, to smell, to see, to feel, to taste, and to face the ones you knew. Because the ones you knew are coming for you, and they're going to say, hey, welcome home, my dear, welcome home. Because they're going to be there to greet you as you go through the door into the world that you think you will adore, that is, as you go, are taken by God up into the sky because the day of your moment of truth is upon you, you see, and you've been waiting for the day when God would take you away from this world, you see, and that day is coming for you. So why are you worried? Are you afraid of not being afraid of what you asked for, that you would be the ones that would be taken by God? And now when the day comes upon you, you're terrified? You're too terrified to face the fact that the day of revelation is upon you, and the revelation is right in front of you, and it's all being revealed to you every day in the news. If you care to not snooze and not pay attention to what the scientists say and pretend that it's all going to go away, it's all going to go away. Everything that you threw in the trash will just go up in ash, you see, and it won't affect the climate at all because the ash will not bring you any cash, you see, and so you don't care if it all goes up in ash, but you sure don't want that trash in your backyard, do you? You'd rather have it floating around in the oceans and up in the atmosphere and bury it underground so that the earth will be contaminated for the next 10,000 years. And that is a sad story of humanity because they didn't trust on reality. So I just thought I'd stop in and say, hooray, hooray, because today, Stephanie, I see that people are beginning to pay attention and they're beginning to see that they don't have to trust on being so blind and deaf in order to avoid anxiety. They can just trust on the fact that they're going to heaven, you see, when the earth gives them a burst of toxic energy and they'll be fine because they'll be free of all the problems on earth at least until they come back you see and find out that they have to inherit the mess they left behind they're going to have to live with it and if there are some on earth today who understand this message then they just say well what are we worried about because what's true is true so why should we fight reality? So let's just prepare for it, you see? Let's be like the squirrels that tuck away their nuts for the winter. Let's be proactive, you see? Let's figure out how we're going to survive through the coming Armageddon, you see? And they'll be the ones who <clears throat> will survive to populate the world again, you see? Because they'll be the ones who say, hey, we're not afraid. We're not afraid of not being afraid of reality. Because we know that God has it in hand. God's tired of seeing 
all the trash floating around in the oceans and all the smog in the air and all the lack of care for the world he gave to his children, you see? And so it's like the day before tomorrow when we see that today is the day that will not stay because the day after tomorrow will be the day that is today after the day and that we throw all our trash in the landfill and it makes its way to the ocean or deep down into the soil where it will spoil the earth with its toxic brew of plasticopia. Because plasticopia, you see, has taken the world by storm. And it did it in less than a century. And that is quite the testament to the people who hide away and say, hey, I live in a fantasy world where it's impossible to destroy my world because my world is just a dream, you see, and you can't destroy a dream. You can just turn it into a nightmare, you see, and that's what's going to happen. It's going to turn into a nightmare for those who did not see that God would take care of them as long as they trusted on God, you see, because God has it in hand. And God is not the one who will stand there and say, hey, I'm going to let you keep trashing the world today because the world that you're trashing, you see, is the world he gave to you. And eventually he just has to say, hey, I'm going to take it away from you. I'm going to take it away from you. And I'm going to give it to the ones who trust on me and who can see that it's time to prepare for the emergency. Because the emergence of the new world is beginning already, you see. It's beginning in the minds and hearts of those who are not afraid. They're not afraid. Because they just say, hey, what a great day it is. What a great day it is. Look at that blue sky and those green trees. Look at the green grass. That was all given to me by God, you see? And now I understand that it is time to pay for the bill that came in the mail. Because the male and the female are going to have to work together this time. The male is not going to have to get to be the one who can be the bill that the female has to pay. And so if you think that the male is entitled to control the woman, then you got a big thing coming, people. You got a big thing coming because the females are the ones who can feel the trust on the change, you see. And they have to poke their husbands and say, hey, it's time to wake up, honey. It's time to wake up and go to work. And the males have to say, I guess I have to accept the fact that the day of male supremacy is over. The day of male supremacy is over. And the time of equality of all of humanity is upon us. And if you think you're better than anybody else, by reason of any criteria, you think you have a better nose than they do, or a better feel for music, or were born into a family that stuck a silver spoon in your mouth, it doesn't matter, you see. It doesn't matter if you're black or white or red or polka dot. It is the time when only the people who have come to see that they exist as a 
as a totality of humanity and that none are better or worse than any other are going to live through the coming stages on earth of the pages of history that will be filled with woe, you see, for the ones who could not hold a hoe in their hand and could not row a boat because they always had somebody to do it for them, you see. So now I want to say I'm going to go and lay low because I want to lay where I can see what's happening down on the earth, you see, and help have Stephanie and my other friends on earth, you see, to figure it out with me so we can all be in a happy community in a safe place because God has it in hand, you see. God has it in hand. And I don't care how you want to wear your hair, but you can't repair the damage that's done to the earth, you see, because the damage has already been done. But what you can do is work with your friends and neighbors to figure out how you're going to fix it in a way that you will be able to repay the debt to God, you see, by helping others to survive through the coming day. And that is all I have to say for the moment, but I'm sure I'll be full of messages to help humanity can't see the way that they did play is only a trust on reality. And so if it's real, that means it can be part of the healing, you see, because whatever is real can be healed. But if you don't trust on reality, you'll never get around to healing it, you see. And so you'll be kind of the heel of the foot that has to slip and slide through the shit because you didn't hit the reset button and say, God, I am resetting my, setting my trust on reality and I'm going to come back into the Trinity and I'm going to accept that I have to be one of the members of humanity who has to help you to do what we all need to do today. Not tomorrow, today. Because the day has begun to fade when we can raid the coffers that God gave to us to carry us through the generations, you see. And if we took away the inheritance that is due to our children and our grandchildren, then we are the ones that will have to pay. Thank you for listening to me. And may you say what a beautiful day what a beautiful day because i heard something really really important today thank you tobias